ओके सो हाई इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स कैन आई स्टार्ट ओके सो हाई इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स इवनिंग एवरीबडी बचे इवनिंग एवरीबडी आई गेस वी नो इच यू दी वेल आई एम डॉक्टर सुशांत सोनी एम बी बी एस मैम सी एम डी पैथोलॉजी रेजिडेंट हिमाट ऑनकोलॉजी एम्स दिल्ली सो लेट एस हैव अ लुक एट आई एन आई पैथोलॉजी रेपिटेशन कुछ भी नहीं है वील बी स्पेंडिंग अबाउट वन एंड हाफ आवर टू टू आवर्स टूगेदर आई मीन इन बिटवीन दैट टाइम स्लॉट एंड वॉट इज़ द टारगेट ऑफ दिस सेशन देखो वेन एवर वी स्टार्ट एनी सेशन ना हमें पता होना चाहिए कि वाई आर वी डूइंग द सेशन देर आर अप्रॉक्सीमेटली ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी टू क्वेश्चन विच कम इन आई एन आई एग्जाम फ्रॉम पैथोलॉजी एंड फ्रॉम दिस वन एंड हाफ आवर्स नो डाउट आई वॉन्ट टू टारगेट मिनिमम ऑफ ट्वेल्व क्वेश्चन सो बिच इज दिस इज अवर टारगेट After doing this session, you will be able to sort out minimum twelve questions in pathology. So let us start. Let us start with our first topic. Acha, I say before I even go further, this is a query that many students ask me. Is sir, should we give I N I exam? Number of seats are less. Sometimes we are from a private college. I have not studied that well during M B B S. I have not topped any exam in uh, during M B B S. I was always a middle level student. Can I clear I N I? Yes, I have never gotten distinction in any of the subjects ever during my MBBS time. Ever, I have not even a single distinction. I was always a middle level, mediocre student, neither at the top nor at the bottom. Always passing somewhere in the middle. But I should I was always good with MCQs. So, so whenever you think about giving up, think how far you have come. Guys, all of us are medicals. We have actually achieved a lot in life. I know it's time पे थोड़ा सा कम लग रहा है, but this is your last paper. I and I need PG exam. After this, life will be better. So, on this positive note, let us start with our questions. <laughs> Starting with the first one, which type of cells are marked with the arrow? <coughs> have a look. Have a look at the image now. What is the parent organ in this? The minute I see this image, I am clearly able to make out that these are alveolar septa with air inside it. That is parent tissue, lungs. Which which are the cells marked with the arrow? They have a brown color. That is, they are hemosiderin laden macrophages. What are they? They are hemosiderin laden macrophages. Keep on telling me the answers side by side. Let's. The more you answer, the faster I will be able to go to the next concept, and let's make this 90 minutes as extremely high yield session. So, which you keep on answering. Which pigment is brown? Hemosiderin. These are the hemosiderin laden macrophages. Hemosiderin laden macrophages called as heart failure cells. Seen in, seen in left sided heart failure or right sided heart failure? Seen in left sided heart failure. Left sided heart failure. Why? देखो वेरी ऑब्वियस इफ दिस इज द हार्ट राइट साइडेड हार्ट फेलियर राइट साइडेड हार्ट फेलियर लीड्स टू इम्पेयर्ड वीनस रिटर्न लीडिंग टू कंजेस्टिव हिपैटोस्पिनोमेगेली एंड नटमेग लेवर वर्सेस लेफ्ट साइडेड हार्ट फेलियर लेफ्ट साइडेड हार्ट फेलियर लीड्स टू पल्नरी हाइपर टेंशन लीडिंग टू पल्नरी डीमा एंड हेमरेज विच शोज हार्ट फेलियर सेल्स so these were the hemosiderin laden macrophages next point next point so the answer was b next i know first question you guys didn't answer now i want all of you to chip in i'll give you 10 seconds to have a look at the question and answer but bachche commit to the answer that is the way to go forward a patient was admitted 4 days back following mal- mal- acute myocardial infarction mi is again a topic you are asked every time in neat pg as well as ini What type of cells will you see in the infected area in this patient? <coughs> Answer. So, this is asking you the time period changes with MI. What is the first change seen in MI? Waviness of cardiac fibers. Waviness of cardiac fibers, which in turn progresses to neutrophilic infiltration and necrosis. Neutrophilic infiltration and necrosis. Now damage has occurred. This is followed by tissue repair or wound healing. That is. macrophage activation macrophage activation and phagocytosis followed by early granulation tissue formation macrophage activation and phagocytosis followed by early granulation tissue formation and scarring these are the time period changes with mi time periods waviness of cardiac fibers half an hour to 4 hours 
neutrophilic infiltration and necrosis begins at 4 to 12 hours but peaks at 1 to 3 days it peaks at 1 to 3 days macrophage activation and phagocytosis 4 to 7 days early granulation tissue formation 7 to 10 days versus scarring which begins by 2 weeks is completed by 2 months these are the time period changes in MI so examiner asked you 4 days making the answer as macrophages medico totally agreed a very common mistake that we make is we think of it as neutrophils but no the answer was macrophages and this is what it looks like have a look at the first image you are clearly able to make out that this is the normal cardiac muscle showing waviness of cardiac fibers half an hour to four hours followed by you are even able to see the lobes of the neutrophil neutrophilic infiltration all these are the neutrophils neutrophilic infiltration with necrosis how do i know this is muscle necrosis because normal muscle, normally the muscle has nuclei. Here, eosinophilia increases, basophilia reduces. Nucleus is blue now. Nucleus has undergone pycnosis, karyorexis, and karyolysis. Nucleus has dissolved, so basophilia reduces, leading to increased eosinophilia. Neutrophilic infiltration and necrosis. Third image, macrophage activation and phagocytosis, followed by granulation tissue formation followed by granulation tissue an extremely important PYQ INI exam only what is the stain used in this image answer girls but you are able to see which colors you can easily make out the presence of blue green collagen muscle is red blue green collagen red muscle black nuclei stain used Mason's trichrome stain, empty, empty, Mason's trichrome, blue green collagen, red muscle. So, you are able to make out loose collagen with edema, with what are all these dark red cells? RBCs inside blood vessels with angiogenesis, making this as a case of granulation tissue formation. Diagnosis granulation tissue, granulation tissue, which progresses to scarring this is again the same empty mason trichrome stain the collagen is compact making this as scarring so these are the time period changes with mi these are the time period changes next point next point this gets us to the gross change in mi recent neat pgpyq this is the ttc staining of the heart Suppose the question that is asked is, what is the site of MI in this? Anterolateral, posterolateral, anteromedial or posteromedial? What will you mark? What is the site of MI in this patient? This is TTC, triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride, TTC staining of the heart. Anterior, posterior. In pathology, which we keep anterior below, posterior on top. Posterior on top, this is left, this is right. So, what, the, what this image is showing you is, patient had an old MI associated with scarring in anteromedial location, followed by a second MI in posterolateral region. See, just towards the posterior side and left, posterolateral region leading to his death. Cause of MI being thrombus in the epicardial vessel cause of MI being thrombus. So, this was TTC staining of the heart. This takes care, this takes care of MI. Two main points that is time period changes with myocardial infarction, microscopy that is time period in the microscopic features along with TTC staining of the heart. This is MI, myocardial infarction. Next point, next point, tell me this. A 50 year male presented with severe rheumatic mitral stenosis underwent prosthetic mitral valve insertion. So, an elderly male with prosthetic mitral valves, in the first two months following surgery, he has a high risk of which of the following infections? Answer, answer. Thanks, those. Seriously, thanks for the kind words. But I want all of you to keep on telling me the answers side by side. 
<coughs> it is a case of prosthetic heart walls two months following which the risk of infection is increased by so you tell me you tell me i can divide prosthetic heart walls i can divide prosthetic heart walls into early versus late prosthetic heart walls early versus late early is less than 12 months late is more than uh, early is less than 12 months late is more than 12 months after the surgery most common organism with early prosthetic heart walls is corns corns that is coagulase negative staph that is staph epidermidis agreed agreed staph epidermidis versus epidermidis versus versus late prosthetic heart walls late prosthetic heart walls is a partially damaged heart only that is subacute infective endocarditis which is strep viridis so increased risk of infections is associated with staph aureus and staph epidermidis that is corns coagulase negative staph totally agreed you also know that infective endocarditis more commonly affects left side of the heart mitral followed by aortic valve except except in iv drug users in which right side of the heart is affected why because intravenous drug will go to right side of the heart and when right side is affected most common organism is staph aureus whereas in iv drug users when left side of the heart is affected then the organism is enterococcus this is infective endocarditis a recent ini pyq infective endocarditis so the major criteria is we need to prove infection by blood culture endocarditis by eco you know that a single culture by coxella burnetii is diagnostic of infective endocarditis recent ini pyq next question on gross examination this is what the vegetations look like infective endocarditis it shows the presence of large friable vegetations just by looking at it i know that embolizations are common embolizations are common this is infective endocarditis versus versus have a look at this i want you to tell me the diagnosis be unbiased just the image is given to you you are clearly able to make out that there are two types of vegetations one are these red colored and the others i am able to see nodularity upar nodularity hai all these nodularity is present that means vegetation is present on lower surface of the heart wall so vegetations are on both sides more common on lower surface diagnosis sle affecting the heart that is lse libman sack endocarditis libman sack endocarditis what are the other fancy features vegetations occur on both sides more common on lower surface of the heart wall next point it affects mitral followed by tricuspid valve that is it affects atrioventricular valves this is libman sack endocarditis which vegetative endocarditis are associated with fibrinoid necrosis which are the ones with fibrinoid necrosis they are rht and lsc vegetative endocarditis with fibrinoid necrosis rheumatic heart disease and sle sle affecting the heart is called lsc limbs sac endocarditis agreed so that was about infective endocarditis which we will be covering about 50 questions they are not 50 questions they are actually 50 topics that we will be taking care of in these 90 minutes so so this gets us to our next question that is you tell me this elderly patient with temporal headache jaw claudication and the examiner already told you that she is diagnosed as a case of giant cell arthritis examiner told you that that is temporal artery is involved it is associated with sudden blindness and so on so which of the following statements about giant cell arthritis is incorrect <coughs> answer in giant cell arthritis i want all of you to tell me in giant cell arthritis are the lesions focally or continuous they are focally distributed that is why negative biopsy does not exclude the diagnosis suppose when you did a biopsy see think of it yourself the lesions are focal you did the biopsy from a normal area so a negative or a normal biopsy does not ex exclude the diagnosis so this statement was incorrect 
it is associated with granulomas and fragmentation is seen in internal elastic lamina. This is giant cell arthritis, perfect. You already know it is a medical emergency to be treated with steroids can lead to sudden blindness giant cell arthritis versus versus now tell me this a young lady 30 year female presented with weakness of the left upper limbs she has the bp recorded in left upper limb was found to be lower than right limb so low bp low bp that is feeble pulses instead of writing such a huge line examiner can simply like write feeble femoral pulses most common vessel affected it is not the left radial, no, it is the arch of aorta, arch of aorta and subclavian. The above vessels are affected, leading to feeble pulses distally, making this as a case of Takayasu syndrome. Tuck tuck are the pulses, so Takayasu syndrome is pulseless disease. Perfect, perfect. All of you are right in this. Takayasu. What do you know about thromboangitis oblique transfer Burgess disease? This is a vasculitis which has the strongest association with smoking. Most common vessels affected? The peripheral vessels, tibial and the radial vessels. So it is associated with intermittent claudication, that is pain while walking. And is associated with which HLA allele? Which are the most polluted cities in India? Delhi, Bombay. So it is associated with HLA B5. This was thromboangitis obliterans. Which is the most common cause of coronary vessel involvement in children? Kawasaki disease. It is a medium vessel vasculitis. It is associated with mucocutaneous lymph node involvement. Mucocutaneous lymph node involvement in children. Usually after viral respiratory tract infections. Diseases in children occur after viral respiratory tract infections. That is Kawasaki. Mucocutaneous sites of involvement being oral cavity, oral cavity, conjunctiva and arthritis that is the joint spaces. So these are the mucocutaneous sites which are involved, oral cavity, conjunctiva and joint spaces, arthritis. Theke, fair enough, fair enough. Most common cause of death in Kawasaki, coronary vessel involvement. Please put a star. So I can safely say. I can safely say most common vasculitis with coronary vessel involvement, most common vasculitis that is Kawasaki disease, that is Kawasaki disease. Everybody, please give me a thumbs up or like the video or tell me if all of you are comfortable with all the points that we have covered till now. Everybody. Next point, next point, this gets us to our next question that is have a look at this. In which part of atheromatous plaque, which part of atheromatous plaque is uh, associated with the, uh, uh, the T cells and macrophages are in abundance. T cells and macrophages are, are the most abundant in which part? Answer. Dekho uh, Agreed. Dekho. There are, this is diagnosis. You are clearly able to see that this is the lumen of the blood vessel. This is a vessel in which the lumen of the vessel has narrowed. This is an atherosclerotic plaque, which has three areas. That is the fibrous cap, shoulder, <coughs> fibrous cap, shoulder, shoulder and necrotic core. Fibrous cap, shoulder and necrotic core. You know this. In which area the T cells and macrophages are the most abundant? Which is the most cellular area in, athero in atherosclerotic plaque? That is the shoulder area. <coughs> that is the shoulder. The answer is C. Bang on right. Which is the most common vessel associated with atherosclerosis? Descending abdominal aorta. Please don't say it as coronary. Most common vessel affected. Most common vessel affected. Descending abdominal aorta followed by coronary vessels, followed by coronary. Nahi bache, Ashin, this uh, thoda sa ho gaya. Most common coronary vessel affected is LAD, left anterior descending, followed by, which is the most common peripheral vessel affected? Popliteal artery, followed by popliteal artery, which is the most common 
पेरिफ्रल वेसल अफेक्टेड मोस्ट कॉमन मोस्ट कॉमन पेरिफ्रल वेसल अफेक्टेड दिस इज एथेरोस्कोसिस सो द एरिया विच हैज द मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ टी सेल्स एंड माइक्रोफेजेस इज द शोल्डर एरिया सो द आंसर टू बी मार्क्ड वॉज सी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ हैव अ लुक एट दिस वन वट वी सी हेयर इज Coronary angiography of an elderly female with chronic atypical chest pain shows extensive atherosclerosis and near total occlusion of LAD. There is chronic atherosclerosis, near total occlusion of LAD, but there is absence of myocardial necrosis and scarring despite complete vessel occlusion in this patient. How do we explain this? Which is which of the following is the best mechanism to explain that despite total vessel occlusion despite total vessel occlusion myocardial necrosis and scarring is not taking place dekho we can divide an atherosclerotic plaque this was an atherosclerotic plaque we can divide it into two types stable and unstable if the plaque is unstable that means if the fibrous cap is thin blood will from the lumen will enter into the plaque leading to complete occlusion what are the factors that make the plaque unstable if the fibrous cap fibrous cap is thin it is unstable if inflammation is severe inflammation severe unstable necrotic core more that is unstable smooth muscle proliferation ni bachi it is not because of anastomosis smooth muscle proliferation if it is absent unstable present stable if necrosis is less stable inflammation mild stable fibrous cap thick stable so this female this elderly female is suffering from a stable atherosclerotic plaque this was a stable plaque that means the fibrous cap is thick lipid core is thin peripheral inflammation is not there but it has a slow growth rate that is a stable plaque think of it yourself suppose a 40 year male has 30% narrowing of vessel lumen today for it to reach more than 80% that is significant levels it will take 30 to 40 years it will take 3 to 4 decades that is a stable plaque versus an unstable plaque in which it will be occurring within minutes so this was a stable atherosclerotic plaque with a slow growth rate so the answer was d next question <coughs> next question uh 35 male died in road traffic accident and the kidney showed this incidental finding which is not associated with this let us firstly have a look at the image this is of course kidney showing the presence of multiple cystic areas you are clearly able to make out the presence of multiple cyst like areas with a bosselated outer surface on cut section on cut section the outer surface has bosselations on cut section the cysts are randomly distributed in cortex and medulla making this <coughs> making this as a case of adult polycystic kidney disease diagnosis adult pkd so which of the following is not associated with this condition it is a disease with cysts in kidney adult pkd na ad inheritance autosomal dominant along with cysts in kidney it also has cysts in liver spleen and pancreas it is associated with subarachnoid it is associated with subarachnoid hemorrhage due to barinerisms which can lead to death of the patient so it is associated with barinerisms and subarachnoid hemorrhage which can lead to death of the patient it is associated with cvs abnormalities most common cvs abnormality being mitral valve prolapse agreed so which is the answer which of the following is not associated hepatic fibrosis which a congenital hepatic fibrosis is the most common extra renal manifestation of childhood pkd not adult pkd hepatic fibrosis is associated with childhood polycystic kidney disease this point again was important next question next question recent INIPYQ a middle aged male present uh, patient has proteinuria this is the renal immunofluorescence given to you <coughs> examiner did not write anything else 
he just told you this is the renal immunofluorescence diagnosis the minute i see this the minute i see this i am clearly able to make out that so many antibodies are are seen in this but every time the glomeruli has a pattern to it igg ig igm c1q c3 kappa lambda so what is it called as this is the full house effect this is the full house effect full house effect associated with lupus nephritis most common class of lupus agreed agreed ashish sanjit totally agreed most common class of lupus sub endothelial deposit it has a sub endothelial deposit class 4 lupus lupus is class 1 to class 6 most common class 4 sub endothelial deposit microscopically showing the presence of wire loop lesions microscopically showing wire loop lesions and on immunofluorescence it has the full house effect this is sle so this was the immunofluorescence of sle followed by followed by have a look at this image now the minute i see this i am clearly able to make out this is a glomerulus with renal tubules on the side where is the problem see you are able to see all these are the capillaries which have very thick walls it is showing you the classical wire loop lesions these are the classical these are the classical wire loop lesions wire loop lesions seen in sle seen in which class of sle class 3 4 and 5 sle but are most characteristic of class 4 lupus this is wire loop lesions there was market thickening of the capillary wall wire loop lesions sle next point next point this gets us to acha before we go further let's have a very quick look at main salient features of fsts also what are the causes of fsts whenever examiner will talk about fsts anything that is associated with reduction in renal mass hypertension hepatitis b hiv reflux nephropathy heroin intake sickle cell anemia important these points again are important the causes of fsts reflux nephropathy reflux nephropathy hiv these are the ones which are most commonly asked hypertension hepatitis b hiv reflux nephropathy heroin intake heroin intake and hereditary nephritis that is nphs1 and nphs2 mutations this is fsts which is the worst prognostic variant of fsts the one with hiv called as collapsing glomerulopathy dekho easy to remember patient went to have some fun but his whole world collapsed around him so collapsing glomerulopathy collapsing glomerulopathy is seen in hiv which is the worst prognostic variant of fsts i'll repeat hiv collapsing glomerulopathy next pstn you already know sub epithelial deposit called as humps it was this times neat pg question neat pg 2023 spikes are seen in mgn humps are seen in pstn both are sub epithelial in nature next it is associated with hypocomplementemia complement is reduced c3 levels are reduced which is transient in nature transient hypocomplementemia immunofluorescence has the starry sky appearance that was psgn good pastures is anti gbm anti gbm antibody type 2 hypersensitivity agreed agreed next image next image diagnosis you tell me examiner just told you this is glomerular immunofluorescence diagnosis bache the minute i see this i am clearly able to make out that antigen antibody complexes they are aggregating together lumpy bumpy granular deposits lumpy bumpy granular deposits giving it the classical starry sky appearance giving it the classical starry sky appearance seen in psg you know that and on electron microscopy on electron microscopy it shows the presence of humps 
this is electron microscopy you are able to make out it had granular deposits sanji but let's go a step further than granular now granular deposits are all three those sub endothelial sub epithelial mesangial all three are granular deposits that was sub epithelial lumpy bumpy granular deposits starry sky appearance psg next as you can clearly see as you can clearly see in this image this is gbm this is glomerular based on membrane this is gbm showing the presence of humps showing the presence of humps i just i know simple straight forward images but bache when the question comes in the paper now we get slightly dicey so humps psgm psgm first class next point next point this gets us to our next question a pathologist is examining examining the renal biopsy what does it show let us first have a look at the image the minute i see this i know that this is a glomerulus this is a glomerulus in which capillaries are pushed to one side with presence of crescent on the outside with presence of crescent on the outside so diagnosis rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis or crescentric glomerular nephritis i am not interested in telling you that i am even able to see the presence of nuclei so this is a cellular crescent crescents are of three types now fibrous cellular fibrous cellular this is a cellular crescent diagnosis rpg doesn't matter doesn't matter let us have a look at the options associated what does it show the crescent is forming because of proliferating parietal and visceral cells it is a crescent agreed but the crescent is forming crescent is forming because of proliferating parietal and visceral cells in bowman space making the answer as one and i can divide crescentric glomerular nephritis into three categories type 1 type 2 and type 3 rpg most common most common type 3 rpg also called as posse immune crescentric glomerular nephritis i'll repeat diseases associated diseases associated with rpg diseases associated which i can divide them into three types type 1 rpg that is anti gbm deposit seen in good patches type 2 rpg n which has granular deposits type 2 rpg n which is associated with granular deposits seen in seen in psg n mpg n ig n nephropathy or burgess disease and lupus nephritis and lupus nephritis so granular deposits that is type 2 rpg n it is seen in PSGN, MPGN, IG nephropathy, and lupus nephritis. The main category, main category, the most common is posse immune crescentric glomerular nephritis. Posse immune means scant or no deposit. Posse immune crescentric glomerular nephritis, which is associated with small vessel vasculitis. Posse immune crescentric glomerular nephritis, that is a small vessel vasculitis. which are the small vessel vasculitis associated with type 3 mpgn that is microscopic pan vigenous granulomatosis microscopic pan vigenous granulomatosis and chuck strauss syndrome microscopic pan vigenous and chuck strauss type 3 rpg it is small vessel vasculitis the disease is associated an important table we need to know this next question next question tell me this which of the following i will not be astonished if you get a question on rcc in your this ini or the neat pg exam which is an important topic renal cell carcinoma which of the following subtypes shows the presence of large cells with plant cell like appearance and a perinuclear halo see examiner in this question he made it extremely easy by giving the by writing the microscopy also but let us just have a look at the image first examiner has just told you this is a renal mass what do you see here the minute i see this image 
I am clearly able to make out that it has intact cell boundaries, well defined cytoplasm with plant like appearance. This is what plant cells look like. Remember we 11, 12th bio, we used to see the plant cells under the microscope. This is the plant like appearance of cells. Around the nucleus, this is the dense black nucleus. Around the nucleus, there is a clear white area, perinuclear clearing or a perinuclear halo. Associated with diagnosis, diagnosis associated with chromophobe RCC. Which, what is the genetics associated? Chromophobe which the name tells you it is phobic of chromosomes, it is afraid of chrom chromosomes. So, this is associated with hypodiploidy, it is associated with hypodiploidy or deletions, deletions or hypodiploidy. Most common type of RCC is the clear cell RCC associated with VHL gene mutations present on chromosome. How many alphabets are there in VHL? 3, 3P, short arm of chromosome 3 versus papillary RCC, papillary RCC which is associated with chromosome 7 or CMET mutations. These are the mutations associated. VHL gene mutation, von Hippel Lindau gene mutation other than clear cell RCC is also associated with cerebellar hemangioblastoma. It is also seen in also seen in cerebellar hemangioblastoma and pheochromocytoma, cerebellar hemangioblastomas and pheochromocytomas. This is RCC, renal cell carcinoma. Next question, next question, identify the structures seen in urine examination, recent INI. So, this, this question will wrap up our kidney also. We are done with lungs, first topic that we started with, we started with CVS, then we went on to kidney. Next topic that we will do will be lungs followed by hematology, blood cancers, RBC disorders and so on. So, we are covering the high yield topics chapter wise. These are not random questions, but they are chapter wise to give you the maximum coverage within these 90 minutes. Identify the structure in urine examination. Now, examiner just told you this is urine you are able to see that these are large cells, these are large cells with high nucleocytoplasmic ratio. Nucleus is large, cytoplasm is less, high NC ratio with hyperchromasia. Large cells, high NC ratio with hyperchromasia, but they are not malignant. See when cells, when cells are put in urine, that is when cells are put in a fluid, their morphology changes. They are not sufficient to look malignant, these are decoy cells. What are decoy cells? So, do not mark the answer as urethelial malignancy in this. They look malignant, they are decoy, but they are not malignant in nature, they are decoy cells, which are virus infected urethelial cells, they are virus infected cells and are seen in polyoma virus and are seen in polyoma virus BK induced nephropathy, polyoma virus BK induced nephropathy. This is decoy cells, these are the decoy cells, they look malignant, but they were not. So, this gets us to our last two images of urine examination. I am not getting into that calcium oxalate crystals are envelope shaped, triple phosphate, triple arena, they have three to six sided prisms or coffin lid appearance. Let me write it on the side. Calcium oxalate, calcium oxalate crystals are envelope shaped. Triple phosphate, triple phosphate or struvite, they are the largest of all stones. So, from renal pelvis when they go to the calluses, they look like horns of a stag, stag on calculi. Having three to six sided prisms or coffin lid appearance, three to six sided prism or coffin lid appearance, triple phosphate or struvite. Uric acid stones have the most varied morphology, but are rhomboid, they are most commonly rhomboid. And lastly is cysteine stones, cysteine stones which have hexagonal laminated appearance, they have hexagonal, hexagonal laminated appearance. 
this was the normal appearance what is important for us what are the prospective questions are polarizing microscopy urine just two images the first is the presence of maltese cross sign you are clearly able to make out this is maltese cross maltese cross sign seen in answer bache if it was a case of peripheral smear i'll say it as babesiosis maltese cross sign in peripheral smear babesiosis maltese cross sign in urine is because of lipid so it is associated with nephrotic syndrome associated with nephrotic syndrome and febres disease ne nephrotic syndrome and febres disease perfect this is maltese cross sign atiti bang on right here so what we see here is proteus infection associated with struvite and it is triple phosphate na calcium magnesium ammonium phosphate it is ammonia so these are the only stones to occur in alkaline urine also only stone to occur in alkaline urine triple phosphate or struvite rest all occur in acidic urine perfect perfect sort of sanjay agreed as you agreed it was nephrotic syndrome and fabris versus have a look at this beautiful image now polarizing microscopy urine examination it's a beautiful image showing you the presence of polychromatic crystals that is it is showing you the presence of multi multicolored crystals i can even make a frame of this and hang in i think my bedroom or something polychromatic crystals associated with uric acid <coughs> polarizing microscopy polychromatic crystals uric acid first class so that was with respect to urine examination next this gets us to our next question <laughs> this gets us to in a patient who has both hbs antigen and hbe antigen positive with declining igm anti hbc antibody and total anti hbc total anti hbc is rising so so what does it indicate hbs antigen and hbe antigen are positive dekho let us quickly make this serology of hepatitis b hepatitis b virus if you know this you will know everything the first antigen to appear is hbs antigen after a long time comes anti hbs antibody the time period between disappearance of anti hbs or uh, disappearance of hbs antigen and appearance of anti hbs antibody is called as window period time period between the two window period when the symptoms of the patient are at their peak hbe antigen is positive so i can safely say marker of viral proliferation is hbe antigen followed by dna polymerase and hpv dna copy number best marker of viral proliferation best marker of viral proliferation being hbv dna copy number the actual number of copies of hepatitis b virus hbv dna copy number after the hbv hb antigen disappears comes anti hbe antibody anti hbe antibody and which is the first which is the first antibody to appear igm anti hbc hbc antigen is never coming in the blood stream so antibody against it that is igm anti hbc antibody and igg anti hbc antibody they are positive since the beginning so now the examiner told you perfect now the examiner told you that hbs antigen and hbe ant antigen are positive so with declining igm that means it is not acute infection which is the best marker of acute hbv igm anti hbc antigen antibody so this is a marker of acute hbv this is declining that means it is chronic active hepatitis chronic high infective or chronic active hepatitis best marker of acute hbv igm anti hbc antibody that was declining hbs and hbv were positive so it was a case of chronic active hepatitis agreed agreed next question <coughs> now have a look at this a mass is ejected from liver of a 32 year old female now first tell me so we are done with kidney and this starts us with our next topic that is liver we till now till now which we are done with cvs kidney cvs kidney 
and we are starting with liver after that we will go to lungs lungs and hematology this is how we will progress further now 32 year female which are the masses that you will think of which is the most common benign liver tumor hemangioma next 32 female will be taking ocps which lung nodule which liver nodules are associated with ocps fnh and hepatic adenoma hepatic adenoma and fnh focal nodular hyperplasia fnh and ha they are associated with ocps next can it be a case of hcc hepatocellular carcinoma no hcc is usually seen in 5 to 6 decade but which subtype of hcc is seen in younger individuals fibrolamellar variant of hcc fibrolamellar hcc which is a special subtype associated with good prognosis and is seen in young individuals agreed so these are our four differential diagnoses in lung in liver mass young female now this is the biopsy image given to you the minute i see this i am clearly able to make out that it shows the presence of rbcs inside the sinusoidal capillaries making this as a case of cavernous hemangioma making this as cavernous hemangioma plain and simple plain and simple cavernous hemangioma so now tell me hemangioma is benign in nature does not undergo malignant transformation has no relation with ocps no relation with hemochromatosis so our answer was hemangioma versus versus this gets us to hepatic adenoma which is hepatic adenoma we'll just see this in two minutes but let us first have a look at one more benign topic hepatic adenoma nahi, which is nahi. let us have a look at one more benign topic and then we go to hepatic adenomas hepatic adenoma has been added in your latest edition of robbins the molecular classification so it can come in your paper now what we see here is 30 year male with progressive exertional dyspnea has elevated liver enzymes liver biopsy periodic acid shift staining is shown which is the most likely cause of dyspnea so examiner made your life easy by telling you that this is a liver biopsy showing past stain. the minute i see this what am i able to make out all these are hepatocytes present in chains and cords showing the presence of pass positive globules an extremely important image pass positive globules in hepatocytes pass positive globules in hepatocytes making the diagnosis as alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency please have a very good look at this image periodic acid shift pass positive globules intracytoplasmic globules in hepatocytes alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency so what is the cause of dyspnea now it is obvious alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency is associated with panacin and emphysema it is associated with panacin and emphysema but you pass stains two things in liver glycogen and alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency what is what does pass stain in git pass positive diastase resistant granules in macrophages in lamina propria GIT Whipple's disease pass GIT Whipple's disease which blood cancer block positivity of pass is seen in which blast lymphoblast ALL this is with respect to periodic acid shift next question so this starts us with liver nodules we have already discussed that female predominant are FNH and HA focal nodular hyperplasia and hepatic adenoma now the question is a young female has hepatic adenoma what will you do stop ocps it will regress on discontinuation of ocp surgically resect the tumor continue ocp does not matter which there is no right answer to this because it depends on the molecular classification hepatic adenomas are of three types that is beta catenin activated hepatic adenoma very very important hepatocyte necrosis factor HNF 1 alpha inactivated and lastly is the inflammatory subtype lastly is inflammatory subtype simple straightforward beta catenin activated beta catenin gene mutation is seen in which all tumors colonic adenocarcinoma 
beta catenin it is associated with colonic adenocarcinoma hcc hepatocellular carcinoma and hepatoblastoma liver cancer in children is hepatoblastoma so if if hepatic adenoma is beta catenin activated it will have a very high risk of hcc so has to be surgically resected even when asymptomatic are you getting this hepatic adenoma the molecular classification beta catenin activated beta catenin gene mutation was seen in colon cancer hepatocellular carcinoma and hepatoblastoma so beta catenin activated has a very high risk of hcc so has to be surgically resected even when asymptomatic versus hnf1 alpha inactivated this does not increase the risk of hcc so it regresses on discontinuation of ocps surgery is not required and lastly is the inflammatory subtype inflammatory subtype which has a small but definitive risk of hcc it has a small but definitive risk of hcc so again has to be surgically resected even if asymptomatic this is hepatic adenoma extremely important now let us see this the other way round colonic adenocarcinoma is associated with which gene mutations colonic adenocarcinoma last year's neat pg question so again can be asked from you the gene mutations occur by two pathways colon cancer can occur after polyp or without polyp if it occurs after polyp it is called adenoma carcinoma pathway there are four main gene mutations which are apc wnt beta catenin and keras which you have to know this adenoma carcinoma pathway versus the gene mutations are apc wnt beta catenin keras versus versus if colon cancer occurs without polyp that is called as microsatellite instability or dna mismatch repair pathway microsatellite instability or dna mismatch repair pathway leading to hnpcc hereditary non polyposis colon cancer colon cancer occurred without polyp non polyposis colon cancer all the gene mutations start with m msh2 msh6 mlh1 msi pathway na the gene mutations start with m msh2 msh6 mlh1 first class everybody apc fap chromosome 5 agreed everybody please give me a thumbs up like the video give me heart if all of you are comfortable with all the points that we discussed on this you are going to get a question from this slide this slide is important so this was about gene mutations associated with liver and colonic tumors so this we have just written molecular classification of hepatic adenoma next point next point this gets us to our next question fibrolamellar variant of hcc we have just discussed that this is a special subtype associated with good prognosis so it has better prognosis than primary hcc more common in young individuals afp is not raised it is not associated with cirrhosis so cirrhosis is not a risk factor if afp is not raised which was the tumor marker of hcc afp alpha fetoprotein if afp is not raised so which is the biomarker of fibrolamellar variant it is associated with neurotensin associated with neurotensin so such a question it can be asked true r 1 2 3 4 5 1 3 5 and so on or instead of writing fibrolamellar variant of hcc the examiner can give you this photograph have a look at this the minute i see this i am able to make out that all these are hepatocytes which are present in chains and cords so you are clearly able to make this out normal abnormal which is they are abnormal it shows you the presence of high nc ratio nucleus cytoplasmic ratio is increased the nucleus is so large in the hepatocytes high nc ratio with presence of prominent nucleoli making this as a malignancy that is this is a case of hepatocellular carcinoma diagnosis hcc poor prognosis versus now have a look at this image this is again hcc 
the nuclear features are very bad it has a high nc ratio prominent nucleoli the nucleo that is it is hcc showing the presence of fibrocollagenous bundles making this as fibrolamellar variant making this as fibrolamellar variant of hcc so examiner will not always give it in written format he can give you the image also fibrolamellar variant of hcc this finishes liver this finishes liver and this starts us with our next and an important rank deciding topic on cohematology of blood cancers starting with blood cancers have a look at this bache 40 female presented to aims opd hemoglobin is low tlc high platelet count 3 lakh showing 14% blas 15% myelocyte metamyelocyte now when i am seeing this question till this point till this point they are 14% blas so i will not think of acute leukemia they are presence of myelocytes and metamyelocytes so i am thinking with respect to cml in accelerated phase you know that less than 10% blas is chronic phase 10 to 19% is accelerated more than or equal to 20% is blast phases you know that so i am thinking towards cml but the examiner told you that it shows translocation 821 positive diagnosis aml irrespective of the percentage of blas if you have translocation 1517 which is the best prognostic aml translocation 1517 fusion transcript pml rara seen in aml m3 acute promyelocytic leukemia aml m3 translocation 821 translocation 821 fusion transcript aml eto also called as ranex1 ranex1 t1 seen in aml m2 and lastly is inversion 16 I'm not concerned with the fusion transcript, seen in M4 and a special subtype of M4, M4 with eosinophils. The minute any one of these three is positive, there is only one diagnosis, that is AML, irrespective of the percentage of plus. And all these three have a good prognosis. They are the only three good prognostic AML. Best prognosis. Translocation 1517 PML Rada. Last to last year's NEET PG question. Why does PML Rada have best prognosis? Because we have therapy against it. That is Atra, all trans retinoic acid. So the question was, Atra is used in therapy of which of the following fusion transcript? The answer was PML Rada. Last to last year NEET PG. So it can very easily be asked in your INI exam also. Next question. Next question. Agreed. next 10 year child presented with pallor and history of two unit blood transfusions hemoglobin is low tlc is high and blasts are present the blasts see have a look at all the four options all four options are acute leukemia so that means blasts are more than or equal to 20% only now now but she arsenic trioxide sensitizer is the second line therapy when atra cannot be afforded therapy of choice being atra but uh, you are very right you are very right next coming back to this all four all four options are acute leukemia that means blasts are more than 20% which are cd19 positive cd10 positive 19 and 10 are b cell markers keep keep on telling me the diagnosis side by side a b c d what will you mark 19 and 10 are b cell markers it is cd33 and 117 positive cd117 and cd33 they are myeloid associated markers they are just friends with the myeloid lineage myeloid markers myeloid markers they are of two types na no? myeloid specific that is there in a relationship myeloid associated mpo is a myeloid specific marker versus cd13 33117 which are myeloid associated so diagnosis bll aml undifferentiated leukemia ya mpal mixed phenotypic acute leukemia mixed phenotype means two types of acute leukemia is occurring together bll with aml answer bache diagnosis bll diagnosis bll please do not make the mistake of marking this as mpal 
many students in my face to face class think that this is mpal bll with aml because you have two myeloid markers but 13 33 117 11, they are just friends they are myeloid associated markers they are not in a relationship i know we guys get confused girls are very sure so so till the time mpo positivity is not written we will not mark it as mpal the answer was one bl so this was with respect to markers next question next question this seems sort of a long question but it is extremely simple straight forward young boy with one day history of bleeding gums subconjunctival bleed has low hemoglobin high tlc low platelet count pt is 20 by 13 seconds pttk is 50 normal pttk is 24 to 36 so pt and ptk are increased platelet count is reduced there is total havoc in the coagulation profile increased pt ptk low platelet count making this as a case of dic making this as a case of disseminated intravascular coagulation dic dic is most common in now it becomes very simple straight forward dic is most commonly associated with which aml aml m3 most common cause of death in aml m3 dic dic is most common with which aml m3 and microscopically a straight forward image as compared to rbc you see the presence of very large cells 2 and 1/2 to 3 times the size of rbc showing the presence of multiple or rods in the cytoplasm are you able to make them out cells with multiple or rods cells with multiple or rods are called as faggot cells cells with multiple or rods are called as faggot cells seen in aml m3 first class this was with respect to m3 <coughs> next question now this is an understanding based question i know it will look tricky it will seem like we don't know this we have not studied this but once you understand the key behind this now i nahi me bache this is what happens is always a trick to the question if you are able to catch that trick your answer is right especially in such rank deciding questions four year old boy has abdominal pain fever with hepatosplenomegaly all the options are blood cancer only so hepatosplenomegaly hemoglobin is low platelet count is low TLC is high with 80% eosinophils so what we are able to read till now is child with blood cancer low hemoglobin low platelet count high TLC that is what is seen in blood cancer with with 80% eosinophils bone marrow is 45% blas 45% blas means it is a case of acute leukemia it is a case of acute leukemia with 34% eosinophils acute leukemia with eosinophils blasts are blasts are cd19 cd10 and cd22 positive 19 10 20 20 22 positive mpo and nse negative now tell me which of the following is not true so if blasts are 19 10 20 20 22 positive that means it is a case of which acute leukemia B B L L T L L A M L, it is a case of B L L, which is the pan B cell marker positive on all the B cells. C D nineteen, immature B cell marker. C D ten. When we were ten years old, we were immature. By the age of twenty years, we matured. Matured B cell marker. C D twenty. So nineteen, ten, twenty. These are B cell markers, making this as a case of B A L L, which is not true. very good very very good ashish sanjay very good inversion 16 is detected no it will be not because inversion 16 is seen in aml which aml m4 with eosinophilia aml m4 that is inversion 16 this is not a case of aml this is a case of pll so the answer was 4 that means eosinophils are not a part of neoplastic clone they are not cancerous translocation 514 is seen in a case of bll with eosinophilia and they will normalize with chemotherapy but it is not associated with inversion 16 perfect very nice very very nice next point next point which is this starts us with our 3 4 bone marrow biopsy images 
Now this neat PG exam had a similar electron microscopic image. This is peripheral smear of course showing hairy cytoplasmic projections. This neat PG exam also had a picture of hairy cell leukemia. Fair enough. So what you need to see now is the bone marrow biopsy. Very, very important. Bone marrow biopsy showing the presence of fried egg. This is what fried egg or honeycomb appearance looks like. Fried egg or the honeycomb appearance. Abhi recently, a few of my friends told me that sir, fried egg is the sunny side of appearance. So, what we see is nucleus is in the center. When we fry an egg, wo egg yolk is in the center, the clear white is around it. Beach mein yellow color hai, surrounding is the egg yolk. So, the nucleus is in center with a clear white cytoplasm around it. Fried egg or honeycomb appearance, hairy cell leukemia, bone marrow biopsy. Next, have a look at this now. This is a spotter. Let us, we are seeing four bone marrow biopsy images. Bone marrow biopsy. What do you see here? Hematopoietic cells are very few. These are the hematopoietic cells. They are very few. The whole bone marrow is diffusely replaced by fat, making this as a case of aplastic anemia. In aplastic anemia, bone marrow cell latte is less than 25 percent. If I have to put a bone marrow cell latte in this, this is less than 5. Bone marrow cell latte less than 25 percent, aplastic anemia. Next, next, a very important image, very, very important. I cannot even stress the importance of this, especially for I and I. Examiner just told you this is a bone marrow biopsy. What do you see here? The minute I see this, it is full of cells. It is a hypercellular marrow. It is a hypercellular bone marrow with. You are able to make out all these large, large cells are the megakaryocytes. These large cells, they are megakaryocytes, they are multinucleated. Agreed, Satya, actually beautifully said. Which CNS tumor is associated with fried egg appearance? Oligodendroglioma. Oligodendroglioma, beautifully said. And which infection? Mycoplasma. Bang on right. Next, coming back to this image. You are clearly able to make out that these multinucleated cells are the megakaryocytes. So, megakaryocytes are increased in number. Agreed. In the background, you are able to see these blue blue small cells which are erythroid and the background is multicolored. In a bone marrow biopsy, you never start thinking that this is neutrophil, eosinophil, myelocyte, metamyelocyte, never. It has a multi it has a multicolored background. So, all the three lineages, erythroid, myeloid and megakaryocytic lineage are increased. That is, it is associated with panmyelosis, seen in polycythemia vera. An extremely important image. I am not even getting into that in PV, hemoglobin is increased, so serum erythropoietin is reduced, PV. And it is associated with which gene mutation? JAK2. Which JAK2? JAK2V617F mutation. Kuch bhi tha. you know this. It is a mutation in genus kinase 2 domain. Mutation in genus kinase 2 domain in which 617th amino acid which is normally valine is replaced by phenylalanine, which is normally valine is replaced by phenylalanine, JAK2V617F mutation seen in PV, ET, PMF, most commonly seen in PV, polycythemia vera, an important image. Next question, next question, again the examiner just told you this is a bone marrow biopsy. Nothing more than that. I am able to see extensive fibrosis here. Nothing is to be explained. Diagnosis, primary myelofibrosis. Which RBC morphology is seen in PMF? Because of extensive fibrosis, when RBCs are coming out, they become teardrop in shape. That is, it shows the presence of teardrop RBCs. It shows the presence of teardrop RBCs or dacrocytes teardrop RBCs or dacrocytes, PMF, primary myelofibrosis, PMF. And lastly, if it was a face-to-face -face class, I would have made this as a chocolate question, a recent INI image-based question only. Examiner did not tell you anything except that this is a bone marrow biopsy. Answer, bache, extremely important. 
answer. What do you see here? You are able to see that all these cells are similar. They are not multicolored. It is not erythroid myeloid megakaryocyte. There is no megakaryocyte. All the cells are similar. They have abundant cytoplasm, eccentric nucleus. Are you able to make them out? Large cells, abundant cytoplasm, eccentric nucleus. That is all of these are the plasma cells making this as a case of multiple myeloma. This is what plasma cells look on bone marrow biopsy. Multiple myeloma, you know, increased plasma cells with any one graph features, that is multiple myeloma, or plasma cells more than 60% in bone marrow, even in absence of crab is multiple myeloma. It is associated with metastatic calcification. Calcium is increased now, metastatic calcification. ALP is normal in multiple myeloma. Please put a star. ALP is a marker of osteoblastic activity. Multiple myeloma has bone lytic lesions. Crab na, lytic lesions in bone. ALP is normal. ALP is increased in osteoblastic activity, not osteolytic. Next point, it shows the presence of M band. M is the monoclonal band on protein electrophoresis. You know all this. Main cytokine associated, interleukin-6. Immunoglobulin, IgG. If immunoglobulin is IgM, then the diagnosis is Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. Immunoglobulin IgM, that is Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. IgG diagnosis multiple myeloma. The point to be noted in multiple myeloma is protein electrophoresis. Please have a good look at this. Normally, normally what we see is albumin, which is the most common protein in the body, albumin. Alpha 1 globulin, alpha 2 globulin, beta globulin and gamma globulins. This is normal. Suppose you have patient 1 in which albumin, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta, gamma. Diagnosis. This shows you increased alpha 2 globulins. Main alpha 2 globulin being alpha 2 macroglobulin mean being alpha 2 macroglobulin which is an acute phase reactant this is seen in infections it is an acute phase reactant next next suppose you nee it was not nephrotic syndrome how will hepatic how will hepatic encephalopathy or nephrotic syndrome look like albumin will be low alpha 1 alpha 2 beta and gamma globulins have a look at this one here albumin is low, albumin is low with a polyclonal increase, with a polyclonal increase in gamma globulins. This is hepatic encephalopathy, which is, this is hepatic encephalopathy. Versus lastly, I need not even ask you this, albumin alpha 1, alpha 2, beta, gamma globulins. This is the classical M band or the monoclonal band seen in multiple myeloma. Everybody, please give me a thumbs up or like the video or give me a heart if all of you are comfortable with protein electrophoresis. All the images were important. It was extremely important. Next point, next point, diagnosis. I want you to tell me this. Burkitt's lymphoma, Burkitt's AML multiple myeloma, plasma cell leukemia. Answer, bache. Answer, examiner just told you this is peripheral smear, ABCD. Burkitt's was asked this time in NEAT PG exam also. What does Burkitt show? Large cells, blue cytoplasm with cytoplasmic vacuoles. The minute you are able to see the presence of cytoplasmic vacuoles, when you are able to see vacuoles in the cytoplasm, that is a case of buckets. So this is not buckets. This is not buckets at all. There are no cytoplasmic vacuoles. What do you see here? This is peripheral smear. RBCs, they are stacked up on each other. Stack of coins appearance. That is Roule formation. This is firstly. Firstly, I am able to make out the stack of coins appearance. That is Roule. Roule may X is silent. We should always keep our X silent. Rule formation. As compared to an RBC, 
we see very large cells, very large cells, abundant cytoplasm eccentric nucleus. Some of them are binucleate also, meaning all these are plasma cells, making this as a case of multiple myeloma. Nahi bache, Satya, nahi, this is not, when you think of M3, bache, when you think of M3, you will see the presence of faggot cells, cells with multiple odd rods, faggot cells, it was not AML M3 at all. All these are the plasma cells, Aditi agreed. So what will be our diagnosis? These are plasma cells. So diagnosis three or four? Four. Because the minute plasma cells, this was a case of peripheral smear. The minute plasma cells are more than 20% in peripheral smear. It is a case of plasma cell leukemia, which has much poorer prognosis as compared to multiple myeloma. I am so much enthusiastic about plasma cell leukemia because recent INI exam asked you, poor prognostic marker in multiple myeloma is beta 2 microglobulin. Increased serum creatinine, in, increased calcium, all are poor prognostic markers, but most significant in that question was increased levels of beta 2 microglobulin. If it is a case of plasma cell leukemia, that means plasma cells have come in peripheral blood, that is again poor prognosis. Next point, next point, the two cells, you know this well, identify the plasma cell, large cell abundant cytoplasm eccentric nucleus with fiery red cytoplasm at periphery, that is a flame cell versus grape like inclusions. See this is a plasma cell, do not confuse this with Burkitt's at all, these are not vacuoles, these are grape like inclusions, they are, they are grape like inclusions in cytoplasm making this as a mod cell. These are the variants of plasma cell. Next plasma cell which it has two bodies, Dutcher bodies, Dutcher and Russell bodies. Easy to remember Dutcher DNA, Dutcher bodies are intranuclear versus Russell bodies which are intracytoplasmic in nature. This is with respect to multiple myeloma. Next point, next question, examiner just told you this is peripheral smear. You are able to make out the presence of brain like nuclear arrangement or cerebriform nuclei. You are able to make out cerebriform or brain like nuclei called as cesare cells, called as cesare cells seen in mycosis fungoids cesare cells seen in mycosis fungoids, which is the most common cutaneous T cell lymphoma. So have a look at this, have a look, true is all except, an important question again, cesare syndrome, she agreed, agreed dear. Now true is all except, tell me this answer, A, B, C, D. Now even if I do not magnify the biopsy image, I am clearly able to make out this is a skin biopsy, this is a skin biopsy. It cesare cells with cerebroform nuclei, that means it is the most common cutaneous T cell lymphoma. Option C and D are right, telling me that this is a case of mycosis fungoids. It is associated with epidermiotropism. The neoplastic cells, they tend to go towards epidermis and it is also associated with potrious microabscesses, which are because of neoplastic CD4 positive T cell, it is a tumour, it is a cancer, it is not non-neoplastic, it is neoplastic. So true is all except B, it was not non-neoplastic, it was neoplastic in nature. So this was, this was about mycosis fungoids and potrious microabscesses, perfect. Next diagnosis, I will be super happy, let us have a look at four abnormalities of neutrophils in our back to back slides. But this is how you have to finish the topics. These are the most high yield topics for INI. Diagnosis. This is of course peripheral smear. The minute I see this, the minute I see this, I am able to make out this is a hypolobed neutrophil. It is not a band form. See, this is not a band. It is a bilobed or a hypolobated neutrophil. Seen in diagnosis. This is the pseudo pelgarhue abnormality, pseudo pelgarhue abnormality associated with MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome. MDS, we need to see three microscopic images. First is the pseudo pelgarhue abnormality, next is the 
पॉन बॉल मेगा कैरियोसाइट पॉन बॉल मेगा कैरियोसाइट यू नो दैट वट इज अ पॉन शॉप सपोज आई वॉन्ट कैश आई विल गो टू अ पॉन शॉप गिव माई फोन की गिव मी कैश टेन थाउजेंड गिव मी कैश आई विल कम बैक आफ्टर सेवन डेज गिव यू इलेवन थाउजेंड एंड टेक इट बैक और यू कैन सेल द फोन दैट इज अ पॉन शॉप इट हैज अ इट हैज अ सिम्बल लाइक दिस पॉन बॉल मेगा कैरियोसाइट सीन इन एम डी एस एंड लास्टली वी नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई आर ए आर एस रिफ्रैक्टिव नीमिया विद रिंग सेड्रोप्लास रिंग सेड्रोप्लास विल भी आइडेंटिफाइड बाई प्रोशन ब्लू स्टे दिस वॉज स्यूडो पेलगरी ऑफ नॉर्मेलिटी एम डी एस वर्सेज टेल मी दिस आई थिंक नीट पी जी ट्वेंटी एटीन आई दर इट वॉज द नीट पी जी और द आई एन आई रिपीट क्वेश्चन वट डू यू सी हियर दिस इज पेटफिल्स मीयर अगेन शोइंग द प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ न्यूट्रोफिल विद विद बेसोफिलिक इंक्लूजन प्रेजेंट एट पेरीफरी वट आर दे कॉल्ड हैज डोल बॉडीज बेसोफिलिक इंक्लूजन्स बेसोफिलिक इंक्लूजन्स एट पेरीफरी ऑफ द साइटोप्लाजम ऑफ द न्यूट्रोफिल डोल बॉडीज विच आर रेमनेंट्स ऑफ रफ एंडोप्लाज्मिक रेटिकुलम एसोशिएटेड विद इन्फेक्शंस डोल बॉडीज डोल बॉडीज वर्सेस सी वेन यू सी दिस डू नॉट एवर गेट कन्फ्यूज विद हाइपर सेगमेंटेड न्यूट्रोफिल इट इज हाउ मेनी लोब्स वन टू थ्री फोर यू नो हाइपर सेगमेंटेड न्यूट्रोफिल इज मोर देन फाइव लोब्स इन अ सिंगल न्यूट्रोफिल सो दिस वॉज नॉट हाइपर सेगमेंटेड न्यूट्रोफिल इट वॉज डोल बॉडीज वर्सेज नाउ हैव अ लुक एट दिस दिस इज अगेन पेरफिल स्मीयर न्यूट्रोफिल आंसर बचे वट डू वी सी हियर Is it hypersegmented? No. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So it is not a hypersegmented neutrophil. What is the problem? Problem is in granules. It shows the number of increased number of granules. That is, these are the toxic granules. Toxic granules associated with bacterial infections. Toxic granules with bacterial infections. And lastly. lastly again a neutrophil showing the presence of very large what is the synonym for large giant granules giant granules and neutrophils which is the most characteristic feature of answer bache phagocytosis occurred but this phagocytosed material was not able to bind to lysosome defect in phago lysosome formation phagocytosis occurred but it was not able to bind to lysosome defect in phago lysosome formation that is shediac gaseous syndrome chs giant granules and neutrophils which is the most common feature of shediac gaseous syndrome this toxic material will kill the neutrophil leading to neutropenia most common feature neutropenia most characteristic feature giant granules and neutrophils cgd ni bache not cgd chs shedia kegashi syndrome also associated with oculocutaneous albinism also associated with oculocutaneous albinism this is chs so these were the neutrophilic abnormalities just have a look just have a look pseudo pelgary abnormality mds dol bodies remnants of rough endoplasmic reticulum infections toxic granules bacterial infections versus giant granules chs shediac gaseous syndrome so these were the neutrophilic abnormalities next next so this gets us to our last two questions rbc disorders a uh, young african male 32 year old african male who was diagnosed with acute prostatitis he had no significant history but on therapy took trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole developing dark urine that means developed jaundice with high retic count with hemolytic anemia jaundice with hemolytic anemia on exposure to antibiotics so which of these will you see in this patient these are your four options image 1 2 3 4 answer i want you to tell me this there was hemolytic anemia on, on taking antibiotics making this as a case of diagnosis g6pd deficiency what does the first image show you the first image let us start let us start with our first image 
आइडेंटिफाई द एबनॉर्मल आर बी सी देखो बच्चे मेजोरिटी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स टेल मी दैट दीज आर एबनॉर्मल बट दीज आर बर सेल्स बर सेल्स और इकाइनोसाइट्स दिस इज एन आर्टिफैक्ट देर इज नो प्रॉब्लम इन द पेशेंट वेल मेकिंग द स्लाइड दिस हैपेंड विच इज अ डायग्नोस्टिक फाइंडिंग इन दिस स्लाइड लुक एट दिस दिस इज अ हॉवल जॉली बॉडी हॉवल जॉली बॉडी नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट सेकेंड इमेज शोज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ बाइट सेल्स दीज आर बाइट सेल्स जी सिक्स पी डी डिफिशियंसी जी सिक्स पी डी डिफिशियंसी वर्सेज इमेज थ्री विच आर द सिकल शेप्ड आर बी सीज सिकल सेल एनीमिया योर रिसेंट नीट पी जी पी वाई क्यू ऑस्ट्रोमोलाइटिस विद सिकल सेल एनीमिया बाई सेलमोनेला मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ ऑस्ट्रोमोलाइटिस इन जनरल पॉपुलेशन इज स्टाफ ऑडियस सिकल सेल एनीमिया सेलमोनेला देन ए प्लास्टिक क्राइसिस इन सिकल सेल एनीमिया पार्वो वायरस बी नाइनटीन इन्फेक्शन सिकल सेल एनीमिया एंड लास्टली यू आर एबल टू सी द प्रेजेंस ऑफ लार्ज आर बी सीज नॉट ओनली लार्ज मैक्रो ओवेलोसाइट्स मैक्रो ओवेलोसाइट्स दैट इज मगेलो प्लास्टिक एनीमिया सो दिस वॉज अ केस ऑफ जी सिक्स पी डी डिफिशियंसी बाइट सेल्स ईजी एंड दिस गेट्स एस बच दिस गेट्स एस टू अवर लास्ट क्वेश्चन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अवर हाइल सेशन Diagnosis. Diagnosis. Give me a good answer. Patient had 90% HPF, 3% HPA2. What is the diagnosis in this case? Thalassemia major. This is a case of thal major. 90% HPF, 3% HPA2. What does the picture look like? The first image. First, tell me the answer. I am showing you all three images. One, two, three. First image shows the presence of target cells. These are target cells. With nucleated RBC, target cells with nucleated RBC. Yes, this will be seen. Thal major. Next second image. It shows the presence of Howell Jolly bodies. Howell Jolly bodies are seen in thalassemia. Howell Jolly bodies. And the third image. The RBC is a very small. It shows severe anisopoikilocytosis. सीवियर वेरिएशन इन साइज एंड शेप ऑफ द आर बी सी एंड आई सो पोकुलोसाइटोसिस आर बी सीज आर वेरिंग साइज साइज इज स्मॉल सेंट्रल पैलेट इज मोर देन वन थर्ड हिमोग्लोबिन इज पुश टू द पेरीफेरी एंड आई सो पोकुलोसाइटोसिस विद माइक्रोसेटिक हाइपोक्रोमिक एनीमिया ऑल द थ्री ऑल द थ्री दैट इज टारगेट सेल्स विद न्यूक्लेटेड आर बी सीज होवल जोली बॉडीज एंड एन आई सो पैकुलोसाइटोसिस विद एम सी एच सी ऑल थ्री आर सीन इन थैलेसीमिया मेजर डन बच्चे एब्सोल्यूटली एंड एब्सोल्यूटली डन सो ऑन दिस नोट ऑन दिस नोट वी आर विच ऑल टॉपिक्स डिड वी कवर वी स्टार्टेड विद वी स्टार्टेड विद सिस्टमिक पैथोलॉजी वी डिड सी वी एस किडनी सी वी एस किडनी लिवर लिवर had a slight look at lungs followed by hematology followed by hematology general pathology i'll i'll keep it as a totally separate session i'll not combine it with this this i wanted to do one and a half hours high yield topics of ini i sincerely hope that you found the session useful i mean absolutely no doubt about it and needless to say bache bestest of luck from bottom of my heart do this paper well it will you know more than you think and the paper will go much better than you expect so on this positive note we wrap up our pathology i thank you thank you